could the Mariners be trying to trade for one of the best shortstops in all of baseball? Someone who would make this lineup so much better and somebody who would be the face of the Mariners along with Julio Rodriguez for the next 14 years, Fernando Tatis Jr.? No probably not but this is the off season and we can make videos on whatever the hell we like so let's jump into it now a lot of the conversation of tatis getting moved comes after xander bogarts signed a massive deal with the san diego padres because of this xander bogarts is going to be playing shortstop the padres already have their infield pretty much set up at this point and there's been talks that fernando tatis may be moved to the outfield however with that being said he has been in multiple motorcycle accidents he was also suspended for peds and there have been questions about his work ethic so fernando tatis could be someone they would look to move but the idea is with the suspension and the motorcycle accidents which hurt him in 2022 what would it take for the mariners to acquire fernando tatis jr obviously he'd be an upgrade at shortstop over somebody like jp crawford in 2023, Fernando Tatis Jr. still has to miss about 20 games due to his PED suspension, although he should be healed up at that point from all of the surgeries that he had on his wrist after those motorcycle accidents. Throughout his career, Fernando Tatis Jr. has just been so damn good. In 2019, he had 22 home runs, hitting 317, 379, 590 with a 154 OPS+. Plus. In 2020, obviously a shortened season, he had 17 home runs, hit 277, 366, 571 with a 156 OPS+. Plus. And in 2021, he was an all-star. He had 42 home runs, 282, 364, 611 with a 166 OPS+. Plus. Fernando Tatis Jr. would be the best player the Mariners have had at shortstop since Alex Rodriguez. He's also locked into a 14 year mega deal that would keep him on the Mariners through 2034 if he was to get traded here, worth $310 million, which is give or take about $24 million a year. Now, before we go into the package that would probably take the Mariners to get somebody like Fernando Tatis Jr., we need to look at the salary and what's working out for the Padres and why they may look to trade him. Right now in 2023, the Padres are over the luxury tax balance threshold. With that being said, they're only about half a million over as the luxury tax is set at 233 million and the Padres are at 233.4 million. Obviously, keeping Fernando Tatis off the roster would help the Padres take their luxury tax threshold money and put it below that $233 million. Whether or not they really care, I mean, look at the Mets that are racking up like a $5 billion payroll at this point. But because they're already over that luxury tax threshold, if they don't want to pay a bunch in taxes, they're kind of done for the offseason. There's not a whole lot more they can do without trading at least somebody. Tatis locks them down for a very long time, and now they have a shortstop for the next 10 years in Xander Bogarts over in the field with them. They also have other players around the diamond like Manny Machado. They have people like Jake Cronenworth. They have Ha Sung Kim. And realistically, for the San Diego Padres, their infield is set. However, their outfield is something different. Obviously, they're going to have Juan Soto out there in right field. Good chance that they will return and have Trent Grisham in center field, but that leaves left field. Also, in the Padres' top 30 prospects, Jackson Merrill is a shortstop for them. He's not expected until 2025, but if you already have Xander Bogarts locked in at shortstop, could they be looking to trade one of their big shortstops for a big return to help strengthen this part of their team as well as help them out financially down the road? Now, fan-sided Soto Mojo actually had an article written about this the other day. This article was by Christopher O'Day just a couple of days ago, and he had this package for the Mariners. Here is the package that Christopher put out there. He said the Mariners get Fernando Tatis Jr., the Padres get Logan Gilbert, Jared Kelnick, Michael Morales, and Michael Arroyo. Now, obviously, we already know about Jared Kelnick and Logan Gilbert, but looking at the other two parts of this trade, we have Michael Arroyo, who is only 18 years old, not expected until 2027, is an infielder for the Mariners. And then Michael Morales, the 23rd ranked prospect for the Mariners at single A ball, expected in 2025, is a right-handed pitcher. Now, Christopher's next paragraph is hilarious to me because I already see this happening as well. He said Mariners fans are either likely saying no way we're we giving up Gilbert or no way is that all we're giving up for Tatis Jr. And I think I lean a little bit more on the last part of that, that the Padres would want more for Fernando Tatis Jr. Because A, he's kind of cost controlled. I mean, $24 million a year could very well look like a bargain if he continues to be the player that he has been throughout his career already. Of course, now with the suspension and the injuries, it's tough to say exactly what we're going to see with Fernando Tatis Jr. And somehow, Fernando Tatis Jr. is just 24 years old. He turns 24 next month, and so he's still really, really young. He's like the same age as Jared Kelnick. 
In this deal, you could put Tatis over at shortstop or even put him in left field, especially if you're trading Jared Kelnick, and keep JP Crawford at short for the time being until it's eventually time to move Fernando back to shortstop. The thing is, if you're going to trade for somebody like Fernando Tatis Jr., you're going to need to give up a lot. He is possibly a Hall of Fame candidate with how he's played so far in his career, and I don't know if what Christopher put in there is enough for Tatis. Working with what Christopher said, he has Logan Gilbert and Jared Kelnick going. I am okay with those two going for Fernando Tatis Jr. I would hate to give up Gilbert, but I think that that's just where we would have to be at to get Fernando Tatis Jr. But Michael Morales and Michael Arroyo may actually not be enough in my opinion. If we look at the Mariners' top prospects, I think we have to give up someone else in our top 10, and I'd probably lean towards Bryce Miller or even Emerson Hancock if we had to. And I'd even be willing to give up Gabby Gonzalez as well. So in my deal, I would have Logan Gilbert, Emerson Hancock, Jared Kelnick, and Gabby Gonzalez. Two of the Mariners' older top prospects, and then two of the Mariners' current top prospects at two and three. If you wanted to twist my leg and get another player out of this, maybe I'd give up somebody like Starlin Aguilar or Milcar Perez. That is a lot to give up for somebody like Fernando Tatis Jr. But what you're getting in return is possibly franchise altering. Batting him and Julio in the top four of your lineup would be one of the best lineups I think that Mariners have ever seen. And with Jerry Depoto being worried about the 2026 payroll and paying someone like Logan Gilbert, well, now you don't have to because now he's a Padre. And even Jared Kelnick is now a Padre. And you have two guys that are probably going to be on the Mariners that are now Padres. I know that this would hurt. This move would hurt so much. But when you're getting somebody like Fernando Tatis Jr., you have to pull out all of the stops. Again, there's probably no way the Mariners are going to trade for Fernando Tatis Jr. But God, could you imagine? There are some people that the Mariners could be trading for. And I made a video on that yesterday. I have that on the screen now. I want you to check that one out. I appreciate you guys watching this one. And go Mariners!